every open world game needs to have a world filled with beauty and secrets to discover. CD Projekt Red are no amateurs in creating a beautiful world and filling it with mysteries to uncover. From what little we have seen of the Night City, it seems like we are in for a treat. Every district from city center to Pacifica seems to have been placed with care and every pixel with passion. Let's talk about the world of Cyberpunk 2077 and why it is a world like no other. Before we delve deeper into how exactly the world functions, let's talk a bit about the overview of the map itself and the different parts it will allow players to explore. At first sight, it may seem like the map is smaller, but that's only until you realize the level of vertical exploration, meaning the amount of buildings that have multiple floors that you can explore is said to be substantial, giving a whole new perspective on just how big the world is since everything you can explore isn't just flat but also vertical. With 6 districts to explore, you'll have plenty of space to cover and immerse yourself in this world for hours on end. Since we are on the topic of districts, let's break down each one of the 6 districts that Night City offers to explore. These 6 areas are said to have distinct feelings that instantly allow you to know where you are without the aid of a map or on-screen notification letting you know where you are. But now, let's talk about how these areas differ and who resides in them and what better way to start than with the biggest district itself, City Center. City Center is home to the skyscrapers and the wealthy elite. Filled with tall buildings and state-of-the-art features, it is the main attraction of Night City, but it's not without its problems. Under the disguise of the perfect dreams lies a district mired with corruption and crime and sky-high costs of living. Despite this, many who seek ambitions end up here. This is also where we first encounter a gang called Maelstrom. The members of this gang have extreme values and even bigger appetite for risk. They often go on big heists and hit jobs. The members also suffer from something called cyber psychosis, caused by an overload of cyberware use. However, it wasn't always like this. Things were different when they were led by their old boss Hammer, under the name Metal Warriors. However, after Hammer was taken out by Inquisitors, a group that hates cyberware, everything changed and they became the Maelstrom. Pacifica is another place that's extremely dangerous that's filled with gang activity. A district that was to be the new major attraction of Night City, but ultimately failing due to the lack of proper funding. Now, a district ruled by gangs. One of them being the Voodoo Boys, a Haitian gang that specializes in use of net running using their brain to find the secrets of the net along with edge running, developing virus that threatens to freeze the network itself. They are rivals to another major gang in Pacifica, the animals. Unlike the Maelstrom, the animals don't believe in cyberware. Instead, they turn to steroids to build impressive bodies and are often used as bouncers at bars and clubs in Night City. The animals and the voodoo boys are at each other's throats and are constantly at war to control Pacifica. Watson is a huge marketplace that hides a huge array of bazaars and markets dominated by Asian cultures. Watson was also formerly a corporate giant, but not anymore. Westbrook is primarily known for housing entertainment for celebrities offering them services nowhere else found. This is also where you will find Japan Town, a cultural place for Japanese community, but all isn't what it seems in Japan Town. A gang known as Tiger Claws is notorious for using their overground business to conduct illegal underground activities and offering services to those with questionable morals. Haywood is a suburban district that hides one of the newer gangs, the Valentinos, a family gang with deep appetite for drag races and out of control street parties. Santo Domingo is a powerhouse of Night City that houses a number of factories and power plants. But as any other district of Night City, even Santo Domingo is mired with gang activity. 
Sixth Street Gang, originally formed to protect the local community, strayed far from its path and now runs Santo Domingo with corruption. With that, we have broken down each of the six districts of Night City. But having a diverse map with interesting locations isn't enough for an RPG, and CD Projekt Red knows this. That's exactly why the world of The Witcher 3 was filled with these little discoveries that instead of rewarding you with loot, rewarded you with stories that made you feel that each location you visited was unique with unique experiences. CD Projekt Red continues this with Cyberpunk 2077 and expands further upon it by adding four different types of quests to fill the open world, namely main quests that will undoubtedly revolve around the main story, side stories that will focus on a specific location or theme that CDPR wants to convey outside of the main plot, street stories where you will be required to hunt down a target and finally minor stories that will focus on small yet impactful narratives. Each of these type of quests sound interesting and will undoubtedly fill the world of Cyberpunk 2077 with immersive and memorable stories. This type of reward for exploration is something I've only witnessed in Witcher 3, be it saving an elf girl from bandits to only later bump into her at Novigrad, or saving an herbalist from guards that turned against non-humans. CD Projekt knows exactly what makes a world interesting and that's why they fill it with stories that will stay with you even after a long time. And that's exactly why the world of Cyberpunk 2077 will be unique. If you have stuck around for this long, I sincerely want to thank you for watching and spending your time on a video that's maybe not of the highest quality. As an end note, like and subscribe, it helps tremendously and I'll soon be back with another Cyberpunk 2077 video.